Bruchim Aboyim. We um, finished up four lectures on marriage. Um, I think I've gave more lectures on marriage than I've given on anything. Uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. There's no question about it. But Torah also gives us the option. There's a whole tractate on what we call getting divorce. So as sad as it is, there is that option of two people not getting along with the best of intentions. And then there is an exit strategy. And the Torah talks about it and all the laws that are dealt with it. But at the same time that there is an exit strategy, it's not something that the Torah recommends or advises us to do. It really creates a certain deficiency within the person, both people. It's not easy. In fact, it says that when a couple divorces, the last words in the tractate of the tractate of Gittin, of divorce, ends with the words that when a couple divorces, even the altar weeps. And we know that the altar in the temple was that which brought peace to the world. So where there's this controversy, where there's this dissension, the altar weeps about this. Not only that, a priest, a Kohen, cannot marry a divorcee when she has been part of this breakup, of this controversy, he's no, she's no longer allowed to, he's no longer allow a woman who has been through a divorce. Now, it's interesting that in the olden times, um, when people got divorced, I mean, they literally hated each other. And today, when people get divorced, many times they're very amiable. You know, we've just grown apart. And uh, it's kind of like changing clothes, you know, rather than skin. And in olden times, part of the reason was is that marriage was a necessity, uh, especially for a woman. A woman who wasn't married um, couldn't support herself and had no protection. So even a bad marriage was better than no marriage. Today, however, women are much more independent. So number one is A, that many women are not getting married. And the exit seems to be open very quickly for people to leave, uh, which is a shame. It's, it's a commitment that people, if only they put more time and more effort. In fact, the rabbis, it's interesting. In Jewish law, when you get married, one of the things that are done at the marriage ceremony is there's something called a ksuba, that it's read. The ksuba is a document that allows a woman, when they get divorced, to be recompensed financially. And it's a whole document that's written up. And what the rabbis did not allow a couple to do, a man could not set up a bank account and say that the ksuba says, I have to give you $100,000. So in this bank, there is an account with $100,000. If we ever get divorced, you take that 100000 and that's it. It's set aside for you. Rabbis didn't allow a man to do that. What the rabbis did is they collateralized his whole estate for the ksuba. And the reason being that if you had to get divorced, you would take time to liquidate. So you would get the money together to give her. And hopefully during that process, during that time, cooler heads would prevail. And a lot of times what happens is it's really an impulse of a moment, of a day. It's amazing. You know, they tell the story of the Holy Baal Shem Tov. A student came to him and asked, why is it that we pray for things every day? And uh, he was looking out the window and he said, let's go talk to Moshe, the uh, water carrier. They went outside and the Baal Shem Tov said hello to Moshe and he was carrying two buckets on his shoulders. He says, Moshe, how are you doing today? And he said, uh, Rabbi, life's not easy. You know, I have to carry this water, and the kids chide me, and sometimes they knock the buckets over. And uh, it's, it's difficult, you know, it's just difficult. And the rabbi said, well, hopefully, you know, things will get easier. And they left. And the student said to the rabbi, what's that supposed to teach me? He said, come back tomorrow. And the student came back, and... Again, the Baal Shem Tov was looking out the window, and there came Moshe again, carrying his buckets. The Baal Shem Tov went out and said, uh, Shalom Aleichem, how are you doing, Moshe? Moshe said, thank you, Rabbi, very well. He says, uh, 
how you feel today? Great. He said, um, what about the buckets and carrying them? He said, Rabbi, thank God I have strong shoulders. I'm a healthy man and people need water. I have a way to make a living to get what I need. I'm grateful for what I have. And he said, what about the children? Yeah, he, he, well, he just smiles, children. Children are children. He said, what about, don't they knock the bucket? No, I give them candy. It works out. Everything's fine. And he said, Rabbi, I've got to hurry up and take care of what I have to take care of. And he goes. And he turns to his student and he says, see, yesterday he was totally despondent. And today his attitude's changed completely. Many times in marriage what we do is we have a bad day. It could be a bad week. But what we do is we keep it going. And many times when we're in anger, when we're hot, we say things. And they can't be taken back too easily. And one thing leads to another. And it's interesting in a marriage many times uh, that couples play leapfrog. That one of them starts to think, you know, really not a bad guy. And she looks at him and she thinks he's been trying. You know, I'm going to get better. And he thinks to himself, I've been trying all this time. I'm not going to try anymore. And they take turns. Each one becomes the negative one. And they can't come together on, ter on equal terms. This idea of, again, of, co of communication and compromise. Divorce is one of the most difficult things that a person can go through. Um, it's difficult emotionally, difficult financially. And sometimes it happens because there really wasn't honesty in the relationship from the beginning. Sometimes people want to get married so bad that they really lie about who and what they are. They try to be a chameleon. They try to be what the other person might want instead of being who they are. And therefore, the marriage has no chance. We change in marriage, but it's something that's evolution, not revolution. It happens over time by both people coming together to find a better answer. That's okay. But when you lie coming into a relationship about who you are, you think you're able to give to this person all the time. Well, it's good at the beginning for a temporary fix. But over time, it gets old. And all of a sudden, the real you comes out. It has to be something you really want. If you wanted to change, change before you get married. Marriage is not going to be the answer to that. And then what happens, God forbid, is divorce. Now, it's interesting. There are two reasons that psychologists give for people getting married, probably getting divorced. The two main reasons are sex and money. If there are no children, it's sad, but doable. Once there are children, now it becomes a real difficulty. Number one is that when you have children, now you've got to deal with child support. And because you have children, you're attached to this woman for the next maybe 18 years or longer. The state's going to make you support. You're going to have to deal with her. And guess what? No sex, and you're still arguing about money. So really, divorce hasn't taken care of anything. All it does is makes it worse. And what happens to a lot of single f fathers that get divorced, all of a sudden they have to, have to actually take care of their children. Where before they had a woman who they, they were kind of back and forth, like a windshield wiper. Now they've got these kids for a week, a weekend, or whatever it is, and they just go nuts. Because they're really not geared towards that type of thing. So instead of getting things better, they come from the pan into the fire. And their life gets much more difficult. You know, when you get married and you have children, children are your responsibility. But the problem is they bear the burden. Many times children in a divorced relationship feel guilty as if they were the ones who caused this. And many times the parents complain to the ch child or children about what's going on. And all of a sudden you have competition. Instead of trying to help the child or children accept what's going on, both parents try to make the other one the bad guy. And what they do is destroy things even more. And they make life for the children unbearable and for each other. And one, one evil brings on another evil. And dealing with step-parents. You know, a step, being a step-parent is a very difficult thing. Even if you're trying to be a good step-parent. Because a mother is very protective of her child. So a man marries a woman with children. If he says anything, she's on him. Because it's her children. So it's not always based on logic of what's right or what's wrong. She's naturally protective. So everything he says, he has to weigh and measure. And trying to do that, and again, especially when you bring two families together, there's that competition between them. Nothing about it works. It's Herculean. As hard as marriage is, 
Divorce is even worse, and second marriages. Now, especially many times, you know, the idea of marriage is called kedushin, something that's sanctified. Uh, God married the Jewish nation. It's something that is special and, and dignified. There's something very, very special about it. When children see that and they see how you work, um, my wife and I have been married 45 years. My daughter, she had been married, I think, five years or so. And we had been married at the time, maybe 35. And she was like in awe. Because it's not a slam dunk. Staying married is work. But that's what life's about. Anything that's successful takes work. And what you do with children when you get divorced, what you tell them is you can quit. You don't have to stay the course. You don't like it, just leave. You don't like this, leave. You don't like that, leave. And that's what our society is about, society of fads. People start everything and finish nothing. When you are successful in marriage, what you do is you show your children this model of it can work. And many times they'll, they will see a little contention between you and yet you work it out because you're working to show them that two adults can get things together. That, that compromise works. That living together works. And not only that, it makes life better. It's that joy that's shared with a friend. And that's what they see. That they're part of a loving relationship. Or the opposite. When you get divorced, then they learn the wrong thing. And also, many times, men get married when they're coming up. And they marry a woman of, of, of a certain level. And all of a sudden, they marry what they call the trophy wife. <laughs> I think he had problems with the first one. <laughs> Trophy wife is somebody that you have to take care of constantly, that needs everything to be reassured on and on and on and on. Nothing is free. So the key becomes is divorce is really not, is, it's the answer if, if you have an awful relationship. Some people are just very selfish. It happens. But the truth is if you really looked enough before you got in, you know, with Shimshon, Samson, it says he married Delilah because she was beautiful. His eyes, she looked good in his eyes. The end result was that the Philistines took out his eyes. You can't marry for your eyes. You need to marry for values, for, the, for like values that both of you, again, Torah values, things that are, that are strong and permanent and important. And when you do that, it grows. And that seed turns into a beautiful tree. And that's what it's about. But if you divorce... Again, and there's children, you have a responsibility. Think of the children, not yourself. You've been selfish enough. They don't deserve to be hurt. So the real key is, if you're going to get divorced, know that it will not be easy. Don't think that you're going to walk away from this. If you have children, you have to deal with this woman all the time. Or man. And the other person is going to try to look great and act great when you see them. They're going to make you, wor you know, feel bad about the fact that, that you left them. And you're going to feel sometimes that you're way on top, and other times you're going to feel like you're laying in a gutter. She's going to come by and throw you a, a quarter. There's no good solution to it. It's, it's destroying lives. And if you have children there, you really should look at it again. Don't let lawyers talk you into what it's supposed to be. Talk to each other. And if you do, God should give you strength. It's just not an easy thing to do. But please, try to have some common sense. And look at your children especially. And remember who they are. And try not to compete for their love, but do what's best for them. May God bless us all that we don't have to go through something like that. Have a good Shabbos and thank you for coming.